This talk is an overview of stimulant medications and related medications used to treat the symptoms of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorders. I'll teach you about these medications with a visual organizer, outlining the options available, and some key tips about side effects and dosing. The main options for treating ADHD are the stimulants, which exert their therapeutic effect by promoting a release of norepinephrine and dopamine, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or NRIs, and alpha-2 agonists. Starting with the stimulants, there are multiple different kinds of stimulants, which can be broadly classified into short-acting or immediate-release formulations, which usually exert their effects across four hours, or long-acting or extended-release formulations, which usually act for around 12 hours. In this table, the generic names for stimulants are listed on the left, while common brand names for IR and ER formulations are on the right. At this point, I would recommend using this table as a reference, rather than memorizing all the names and varieties. Common side effects of stimulants can be remembered with the mnemonic STIM, sleepless, referring to insomnia, ticked, referring to both irritability and exacerbation of ticks, icky, referring to GI side effects, and muddled, referring to headaches. Rare but serious side effects of stimulants can be remembered with the mnemonic aches, anger or agitation, cardiac adverse events, height and growth suppression, episodes of psychosis and mania, and serotonin syndrome and suicidal ideation. There are various dosing strategies for stimulants using combinations of IR and ER formulations. Two principles to consider when choosing a dosing strategy are to avoid dosing in the late afternoon and evening to avoid insomnia, and that IR dosing has a higher risk of dependence, misuse, and withdrawal due to more rapid onset and offset of stimulating effects. Therefore, my preferred first-line dosing strategy to optimize safety, tolerability, and convenience is once daily dosing of an ER stimulant in the morning. Sometimes, the ER stimulant will wear off too early in the afternoon, in which case it is often appropriate to add an IR stimulant at midday. If ER stimulants are intolerable to the patient or do not provide sufficient therapeutic benefit, then you may need to consider an IR-only dosing strategy. One last thing to consider is that, since stimulants directly promote norepinephrine and dopamine release, they do not require regular daily dosing to achieve therapeutic benefit. Therefore, patients can consider taking drug holidays, or days when they do not take the stimulant, on weekends or other days when they do not have work or school. Let's move on to the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or NRIs. The most commonly used NRI is adamoxetine, which can be dosed once or twice daily. Common and serious side effects of NRIs are similar to stimulants, likely due to their shared norepinephrine mechanism. However, since NRIs are reuptake inhibitors and, similar to SSRIs, require regular daily dosing to achieve their therapeutic effect, there is less of a potential for misuse compared to stimulants. Finally, let's discuss the alpha-2 agonists, guanfacine and clonidine. While this class of medications were initially developed for the treatment of hypertension, the extended release formulations of guanfacine and clonidine, with brand names of Intuniv and Capfe, have specifically been studied for the treatment of ADHD. Common and serious side effects can be remembered with the mnemonics guan and clon. I use clon for the serious side effects to help you remember that clonidine has a higher risk of serious side effects compared to guanfacine. These mnemonics should be self-explanatory, but I want to specifically point out one of the serious side effects, which is the withdrawal syndrome. This withdrawal syndrome may occur when guanfacine or clonidine are abruptly discontinued and may involve anxiety, insomnia, flushing, sweating, and a rapid increase in blood pressure, which is known as rebound hypertension. This is potentially a medical emergency, so patients should be carefully counseled to avoid abrupt stopping of these meds and these symptoms should be monitored for when attempting gradual discontinuation. That's the end of this talk. Given the relative safety, misuse, and side effect concerns of these options for treating ADHD symptoms, I prefer to trial NRIs and at least one alpha-2 agonist before a stimulant trial, particularly in patients with a history of substance abuse or patients who may be particularly sensitive to stimulant side effects. Thank you.